All right, let me go get the tractor fired up. Got this one back in for a checkup. It says it will start, but it won't keep running. So I think I better see if I can blow that filter out and see if I can do a better job. I think one thing of interest though, if you look, is that filter worked? You know, I don't know what that stuff is, that dusty stuff is, but that filter worked pretty good for better than I expected I can tell you that right now so let me start out by just cleaning that up and seeing if I can get it to run and idle that'd be a nice start to the day wouldn't it something simple like that it's got a little gas in it a little oil decomp it's got good compression and I didn't check spark but I imagine that'd be really tough to get the idle so I'm gonna take this off and blow it out and we'll start from there. Now this one's not getting fuel for some reason. Well, one of the reasons why it's probably not getting fuel is the fuel line's off the carburetor. Do you think that'd be a reason? Let's see if that helps. The question is how come it come off? That would be my question. And yeah, see it comes off kind of easy. I wonder if I would trim that fuel line just a little bit. saws. Well these are two of the test saws that I've had out with a pro logger now for quite some time. This was the first one, saw number one. And that's basically just a stock build. Nothing special about it. This one here has the highway top end and pop-up piston. 
both of them run good, you know. Both of them have good compression. So there isn't anything going on at the bottom end of either one of those two saws. Um, both of them have, well, I think all the updates I can think of short of the carburation, which was not done on that one, but was done on this one here. It's got the handles, it's got the trigger controls. And the real significance is this is a year later, actually a year and a half for that saw. And the kind of things I'm fixing on them are, this one here had a plug filter, right? And that one there has a soft fuel line. And both those saws probably have more time on them than most people have ever put on a saw. They weren't used so much for felling, they were used for blocking up the timber on the landing. None of the hard parts have failed on these saws. You know, as you can tell, I've got some rubber issues and things that you'd expect to get on the, on the Chinese aftermarket parts. That one there probably needs an OEM fuel line, you know. This probably could use one. It'll get soft over time. They don't seem to stand up to the alcohol as well as OEM does. But it's that kind of thing that I've got to work through on these. Over the last, what, three years, I think I've got a build going to where the hard parts are pretty stable on these saws now. Now it's just like I said, detail. I'll take those kind of problems all day long as compared to like PTO bearings and stuff like that. All right, let me see if I can catch up to where we are this morning. I've got three of those test case PharmaTech 660s in yesterday. And those two right there um, seem to be pretty simple solutions. One had a completely plugged air filter and the other, the fuel line had popped off the carburetor. To start the day, let me just see if I can get them both fired up. clutch on this one because something's going on with the clutch. Now I've got this OEM spring. I think that's what we're going to do is just put a spring back in there. Now the scary thing on this one here was the spark plug was in only finger tight. Yeah, it's running pretty rich. So this saw, I think, was put together 2000, either late 2014, uh, early 2015, right? And I used it for the better part of a, a summer into the fall. And I had to debug carburetors and a variety of things. I'm not sure how much it, I'm not sure how much this one here turned up on video. Um, it did in the beginning show up and it also showed up on the where are they now video or it was out blocking firewood at the, at, uh, the fellow's place. Random spare parts. I did get a dirty air filter back. Maybe I better go clean that out. But this is a saw that's got some time on it. This is no, you know, spring chicken. This has actually got a fair amount of time. And I think it begins to play into that whole narrative of, well, how long do they last? Well, here's one that's got three years on it. And what made it stop was a crushed handle. Well, I had one of these from a used saw, so they can go right back on. The problem I'm going to have is finding those stupid little nuts. Look at that. What the heck was that? I had to dig through the junk pile to get these. And I really think that's about all it requires. Just put it back together and get it fired up. And I'm not sure. Oh, I wonder 
if he's got the right stuff behind the carburetor. That don't feel right at all to me. I better zip those off and take a quick look behind the carburetor. Because that shouldn't go down that far. You know? The ring and the metal ring and all that. Knowing him, he doesn't even know to do that. See, he didn't even he didn't even put in the ring behind the carburetor. That's why you really want to have people who know what they're doing play with these darn things, because you can get a guy like this. You know, he's not a bad dude. Don't get me wrong; he's a friend of mine. You got to put in the hardware to hold that boot. All right, let's try this again. But you see that kind of a white? I mean, that thing came apart like a stretching piece of cheese. So, the 1184 still works pretty good. But I had to hammer that top end off. Look at that piston. You see that nice film? That's what I keep talking about when I start talking about 32 to 1 saws and 50 to 1 saws. If I pull a 50 to 1 saw apart, that's going to be dry as a bone every time. Whereas if you look inside here, you're going to see there's sort of a, a sheen everywhere where there's just a little bit of oil coating everything. You might ask what's going on here. And the answer is, one of the guys wants a 52 millimeter top end on the on their saw. See this is a good OEM 372. I don't know if you can see the difference. You see how it's a little bit more transfer port area on this cylinder than this one here. And that thickness is a little bit thinner. This is 50 millimeter. That's 48 millimeter. I don't know if you can see that. I've gone through this before. Here here's a 50 millimeter piston. You can see how it's a slip fit there, so that's a 372. And this is a 365, where this won't. That's a 48 millimeter bore versus the 50 millimeter bore. So, I now have a nice 372 OEM top end. I'll hit it with a hone. That goes on some other saw. I, sh I wish I had this. Before, when I was building the pop-up piston saw, this would have been a better top end than what I have on there. But it'll go back into parts inventory. And I'll figure out something to do with it. X-Torque. All that crap in there to get that slug of air to in front of the charge coming up from the transfers so he gets pushed out the exhaust to help things burn. There's an X-Torque 50 millimeter top end. Right? You can tell from the transfer caps and the decomp is on top. But if you pull it apart, you can tell because it's got uh, two holes, one that goes to the bottom end. This would be your normal intake hole or intake port. And then this here is the straddle port that carries air through these passages to get picked up by the piston and deposited to the um, 
section of the transfer ports that intersect the cylinder. So when the charge comes up, it picks up that air and carries it through to the exhaust. So here's the next torque. I think doing this really makes sense. Here's a 372 original edition, 50 millimeter, right? Notice that it's shorter and it has less fin area, just a smaller cylinder all the way around, even though the bore is the same. And this is probably the best design of all time. Also notice that the decomp is on the side, right? This is a 365. And the big difference between the 365 and the 372 is less cross-sectional area of the transfers and a smaller bore. No, let me get this thing stuck together. Crank is a little, got some time on it. Well, it runs beautifully. Of course, you'd expect it to, right? So, we're going to put a Oregon VersaCut bar. It's not even a pro grade. It's their medium grade bar that has the aluminum sandwich, basically, where it has aluminum on the inside sandwich with steel. And it doesn't have a replaceable tip, and that's why it's not a pro bar, I guess. But it's got the five rivets, and they tell me that the sprocket should be pretty much the same as the other bars so why not and the fellow I'm building this for this is kind of an experiment okay here's some LGX I had laying around it's got a lot of time on it though but this is he's going to supply the chain I'm just putting this on so I have something to push a little bit with Basically, this is a 365 or makes no difference 372 conversion to the XBW. And I did this once before, kind of a bolt by bolt last time. This time I'm just sort of letting it rip. Uh, this guy took this saw to get it tuned up from a, one of the local places, not CNY Farm Supply. One of the other places that happens to sell steel. I'm not going to tell you which one. And this looks to me like an estimate. So they basically are going to charge them 200 bucks. And they said it needed bar, plug, filter. It's got a filter. Looks like brand new. Gas line, gas filter. Or they'd buy it for 100 bucks. And they'd sell them a MS-271 for 400 bucks. Now I want you to think about this for a second. This is a steel 026. That's a pro level saw. That's a hell of a saw. It has excellent, excellent compression. Its biggest problem is this. I'll, I'll see if I can shine some light in there. It's like the fuel line got busted off. I'd say that bar is whooped, so it does need a bar and chain. That's a junky chain. But well, that's a hell of a saw. To offer someone 100 bucks for that saw in that condition, with that kind of compression. So what I'm going to do is put together a quote for the guy. And I'm just going to stick a fuel line in there. Fuel filter fuel line. Get him a bar and chain. You know. Some of these places need a little bit of competition.
I got a lot of time on it now. I figured I might as well put some more in. Uh, I'm going to go down in the valley there a little bit and get some of the stuff out of the swamp. Uh, at least I want to see if it's salvageable firewood. maple that's awesome firewood uh, I need to come down here with a different vehicle so I can back down in there with the big tractor and pull the whole log or something but because I want some exercise I'm going to split some of this up and carry it up to the trailer and call that a day I think that's plenty right there for me to split and bring up to the trailer you might ask why I'm doing this and that would be a legitimate question you know, after the hip replacement, everything's good and all that stuff, I continue to do this. Well, the answer is this, and I think that's the point of the video, is I've gone from literally 294 pounds, where this morning I was 257. And I feel like a different person. It's been huge for me to make that kind of a change. I want to see if I can get down into the 240 range first and then possibly down into the range I was when I first moved out here, like the 220s. I just think as an old fart, if I can get myself, you know, a little healthier, it adds to the quality of life. I can enjoy doing the things I want to do. A little tougher splitting in this jacket it kind of limits your range of motion just a little bit but i think this maple is hard and frozen and i think it'll split pretty easily and to those who'll sit there and from their couch, tell me I'm being inefficient and I should be doing it a different way, you're missing the whole point. The point for me is I'm out here in the woods where I love to be, 
playing with project saws, which are fun for me, swinging an axe, and basically living a lifestyle that it took most of my work in life to get to. And so very quickly could be taken away by health and health-related issues. And hopefully by taking this inefficient approach to providing wood to heat the house, I can actually enjoy this, this place. That's probably enough. I'll go split one more log. Bring that stuff up. Call it a day. <laughs> oh, I have to do one more little plug. These boots. Would you believe me if I told you I bought those in, in about 1970 from Herders? And those are Sorel boots, the brand name. And the only thing I've replaced is the inserts, which I've done, well, from 1970 to 2018. That's 48 years old, those stupid things are. That's a good boot right there. No kidding. The rubber hasn't come apart or nothing. So those old Sorels were really built well. I figure if I get a load a day like that, that's my exercise instead of going to any time fitness or anything like that. Instead of doing what my forefathers would have done, and that slide around here on cross country skis in Finland, I do it the old fashioned way, one foot in front of the other. <laughs> 